far uh, we have seen the cardiac cycle and its events then we also discuss the pressure volume changes the arterial pulse waveform which is created by the uh, left ventricular pressure changes and the atrial pressure changes recorded as jvp now we will see another major aspect of this and that is left ventricular pressure and volume changes i must say this is the most important section and uh, every year in uh, various entrance exams we see questions coming on this uh, let's uh, therefore discuss this and let me also tell you before we start uh, let's see some of the questions which have come in the recent past for instance there was one question uh, they generally give this uh, left ventricular pv loop and point out a particular area of that loop and they would ask the question on that so for instance here is a left ventricular pv loop and uh, they have shown four points in this and then the question is which point corresponds with arterial diastolic blood pressure so that's one question which has come twice actually and uh, unless you understand this curve there would be a little chance that the answer would be right so we must understand these left ventricular pressure volume changes the answer in this particular question was b why we will discuss it then clinical application now there is a the trend of clinical questions or problem based questions so they will give you a normal loop and an overlapping uh, abnormal loop on the same graph and then the question will be what is this condition or uh, left ventricular pv loop is shifted to left in which of the following conditions mitral stenosis mitral regurgitation aortic stenosis aortic regurgitation would you want to answer that question yes it's uh, mitral stenosis so why is that we will discuss all the aspects related to this okay so let's start first of all uh, there are two ventricles then why are we interested in the left ventricle alone that's because left ventricle is the one which is pumping the blood that circulates throughout the body the systemic circulation it's a high pressure um, circulation and therefore we will be interested mainly in this if the left ventricle fails then obviously uh, the blood would not be circulating in a normal way and for the right side of the heart we have seen the right atrial pressure changes so it's uh, important to now let's see the left ventricle let's draw a normal left ventricular pv loop as it is commonly called on the horizontal axis we have volume in ml on the vertical axis we have pressure mm of hg and we have already seen this in the cardiac cycle that uh, during the phases of systole the pressure would rise and the volume in the ventricle will decrease because it's a systole it's ejection and uh, therefore volume will decrease in the ventricle blood will be ejected out and during the phases of diastole the pressure will fall and the volume will increase yeah the blood will be received by the ventricle so that's a very basic uh, thing that we already know okay now uh, the units for the ease of understanding i'll take the easiest units so for volume 50 ml 100 ml 130 ml and for pressure 50 mm of hg 100 mm of hg 130 mm of hg it will be easy to understand uh, to remember 50 100 130 all right now uh i'll draw an arrow to indicate a particular 
uh, phase in the cardiac cycle. Look at the arrow. It's going from where to where and then try to understand what that phase is in a cardiac cycle. Ready? Let's start. First phase. Here is the arrow. The first phase. What do you see in the phase? Volume is going from 50 to 130 ml. Left ventricular volume. So, what is this phase? Naturally, this is the phase of filling. Let's write it down. Phase number one. It is the phase of filling. Um, in each arrow, we will look at the volume as well as pressure. So, just see what is happening to the pressure in this particular arrow. Look, the arrow is flat. The pressure is not rising. The arrow is not going up on the vertical axis. It means what? It means left ventricle is accommodating this blood. It's a phase of filling. But there is no increase in the left ventricular pressure. See, pressure on the vertical axis. Arrow is flat. Pressure is remaining the same, almost the same. So, it means left ventricle is a very compliant chamber. It accommodates this blood without allowing the pressure to rise. Okay, that's the meaning of this particular line. Volume increasing, pressure not increasing. So, left ventricle is not allowing the pressure to rise. And therefore, once you understand this, then... Suppose an abnormal graph is given and they ask you what that curve indicates. I mean, for instance, this line going up like that. What would you think of that? Volume is increasing. Fine. Ventricle is accommodating the blood, but its pressure is rising. That means there is a condition shown with a broken arrow that this condition the, uh, as the blood is filled in the ventricle, the pressure inside the ventricle is rising. It means ventricle is not able to expand properly to accommodate that blood. So, what are those conditions in which ventricle is unable to expand properly? Constrictive pericarditis, cardiac tamponade. Those are the conditions when ventricle won't be able to expand properly to accommodate this blood. And then the ventricular pressure will rise, which should not happen under normal circumstances. So, you know, once you understand the line or the loop completely, then it becomes easy to answer all such questions. Let's go back to the normal loop. Okay. Second phase. Let's draw another arrow, a vertically up going arrow. So, phase number two, what does it indicate? It indicates that now, look, for the same volume, the pressure is rising on the vertical axis, the arrow is going up. So, same volume, but pressure is rising, isovolumic contraction easy so the second phase is isovolumic contraction volume remains the same but pressure is rising okay third phase let's show a curved arrow coming back this is the third phase what can you see here the volume from 130, it is coming back to 50 ml. That means ventricle is ejecting out the blood, right? Therefore, phase number three is the phase of ejection. What do you see happening to the pressure? Pressure is rising in this phase. For most part of the phase, 
the pressure has gone up on the vertical axis you can see only the last part has shown a slight dip so how do you read that okay let's correlate if you remember in the cardiac cycle i had mentioned oxotonic contraction as the contraction proceeds the strength of contraction goes increasing and that's called as oxotonic contraction yes and therefore the pressure inside the ventricle also goes increasing for most part only the last part what's happening is that now there is a outflow resistance to the left ventricle because aorta is now filled with blood that only the last part the pressure in the left ventricle will slightly dip but otherwise it's an oxotonic contraction left ventricular contractile strength goes on increasing with the systole and therefore pressure in the left ventricle also is increasing as shown by the arrow that's going up but you see the volume mainly from 130 it came back to 50 then next phase let's show a vertical arrow that is coming down so this is phase number four what is phase number four what can you see there now the volume remains the same 50 ml 50 ml volume is remaining the same but the pressure is falling so same volume but pressure is falling isovolumic relaxation so phase number four isovolumic relaxation these are the phases in the cardiac cycle and of course pressure volume changes in the left ventricle okay let's also see simultaneously what happens to the valve valve opening and closure at what points it will be easy look at this point let's say point a let's write down these four points as a b c d so what happens at point a filling is starting means mitral valve opens we are talking about left ventricle okay so mitral valve will open and the filling will occur so let's write down point a uh, we can write he here mitral valve opens and then the filling happens at the end of the filling point b what happens there mitral valve closes filling has ended so mitral valve will close diastole over mitral valve has got closed but aortic valve is yet to open remember cardiac cycle events so both valves are closed ventricle is contracting like a closed chamber so isovolumic contraction phase number two aortic valve is yet to open finally at point c the aortic valve will open and uh, then the ejection will start from the left ventricle into the aorta ejection happens phase three and then at the end of the phase three there's point d now it's obvious aortic valve closes ejection over aortic valve closure has happened here and ejection finished and then as you know aortic valve closes but mitral valve is yet to open and therefore there is a period of isovolumic relaxation both valves are closed in front of the left ventricle all right that were the uh, valvular uh, changes opening and closure well let me just take that question also which point corresponds with the arterial diastolic blood pressure we can sort it out here look arterial diastolic blood pressure is the lowest pressure in the vessel when the heart goes in diastole 
okay try to understand these are left ventricular pressure volume changes and what is being asked is the arterial diastolic blood pressure it will correspond with what which point so diastolic blood pressure means the lowest pressure in the vessel when the heart goes in diastole so that lowest pressure in the vessel will come by the end of the diastole in the ventricle so end of the diastole that's point b this is when arterial pressure also will be at its lowest and ventricular diastole is ending left ventricular diastole and after that uh, the next systole is going to start okay so point b is the answer when that is happening in the left ventricle there will be diastolic blood pressure that can be measured from the artery that uh, was the first initial uh, description of a normal curve now let's um, understand in detail the features in this curve first of all let's try to understand these volumes during various uh, phases all right so i would like your attention to be drawn to this point point b this point is the end diastolic volume it represents the end diastolic volume okay let's write down end diastolic volume is about 125 to 130 ml and uh, also note this point here that end diastolic volume represents what it represents preload on the ventricle we have started this load discussion i may just write it uh, as an additional point what is preload and after load we discussed it in the skeletal muscle preload means the load on the muscle before its contraction starts and after load is the load against which the contraction is happening so preload end diastolic volume represents preload okay and you will also note that uh, it's almost the same on both ventricles i'll come to that second point is from this 130 ml well this point is the end systolic volume you can see ejection has ended over here so so this point is the end systolic volume how much is it 50 ml so from the 130 ml of end diastolic volume 80 ml was ejected out during next systole and what was left behind was 50 ml which is called as end systolic volume volume in the ventricle by the end of the systole yes ventricle does not eject out all the blood that it contains some uh, blood is left behind and it's called as end systolic volume let's write down here end systolic volume is about 50 ml before we move on what does it represent end systolic volume represents the contractility of the ventricle contractility i mean imagine if the left ventricle is contracting more powerfully strongly then it will eject out more amount of blood and that means less blood will be left behind as uh, end systolic volume isn't it so end systolic volume has this significance it indicates the myocardial contractility remember this point we'll come back to this once again third point next point is therefore what is indicated by the width of this loop 
you can see width is indicating certain volume what is that volume stroke volume so width indicates stroke volume it will be easy to uh, look at the graph and say whether the stroke volume has increased or decreased based on the width increase width increase stroke volume decrease width decrease stroke volume naturally obviously right and then the next point height of the loop indicates what height see on the vertical axis there is left ventricular pressure isn't it now left ventricular pressure uh, increases when the aorta pressure is high i mean aorta pressure if it is higher then left ventricle will have to contract strongly and the left ventricular pressure will also increase so height of the loop will also increase and therefore please remember height of the loop it tells us about the left ventricular pressure yes but it is indicative of after load on the left ventricle okay after load is the load against which the ventricles contract and uh, if that load is higher just now i told you uh, that uh, aorta pressure if it is higher then the left ventricle will have to contract powerfully if aorta pressure is increasing then the left ventricle will have to uh, apply more force and its pressure will increase and therefore height will increase so increase in the height indicates increase after load please remember this when we discuss the graphs at times i will say height has increased so we will take it as a reflection of increased after load on the left ventricle right so these are some of the additional features in the curve that we must understand okay since we started our discussion on load let's just finish that part as well preload look end diastolic volume indicates preload isn't it what is end diastolic volume by the end of the diastole how much blood is filled in the ventricle that's called as end diastolic volume uh, so more the amount of blood filled in the ventricle more will be the stretch on the ventricular muscle fiber more stretch of the ventricular muscle fiber means it will have to contract stronger and its load has increased okay so with next systole uh, it has more load because it got stretched more during the previous diastole by the end of the diastole so end diastolic volume indicates preload and uh, after load i mentioned already is the load against which the ventricle is contracting so let me just compare it here comparison of the right ventricle and the left ventricle regarding the preload and after load it's not related to the graph okay i'm just making a comparison for the sake of understanding it's not in the graph look preload is almost the same on both ventricles okay preload is almost the same now if you remember i had mentioned this in the cardiac cycle that in some other discussion i think jvp that uh, there is a 1 or 2% extra blood that fills in the left side of the heart it never goes to right side and that's the bronchial venous blood so then 
end diastolic volume will be slightly higher for the left ventricle then how come you will say that preload is same on both ventricles well yes although one or two percent extra blood is filling in the left ventricle as compared to right ventricle but left ventricle is a pliant chamber i mean it can accommodate that extra blood without allowing the load to increase without allowing the pressure to increase okay so even though there's some extra blood on the left side the preload and look i'm saying end diastolic volume reflects preload it's not that end diastolic volume is equal to preload or end diastolic volume is preload it reflects preload so the point was simple although some extra blood is there on the left side compared to right side still preload is almost the same now coming to the after load okay left ventricle is pumping the blood against the aorta pressure after load is the load against which the ventricle pumps out the blood so left ventricle ejects the blood against the aorta pressure which is 125 mm of hg right ventricle ejects the blood into the pulmonary artery which has a pressure of 25 mm of hg okay so after load is the load against which uh, the ventricles are contracting and therefore note this point that after load on the left ventricle is 5 to 7 times higher as compared to the uh, right ventricle because uh, pulmonary artery pressure is a low pressure so right ventricle has a lesser after load and left ventricle has a greater after load therefore um, please remember this after load many people wrongly uh, uh, think that after load means end, end systolic volume or something because that is after the systole is over something like that uh, many students have asked me the question like this please remember after load is the load against which the ventricle contracts load which starts acting on the muscle after the contraction has begun okay so that is uh, one more uh, important point and therefore work output by the left ventricle is five to seven times greater as compared to right ventricle okay that's because left ventricle is ejecting out the same amount of blood but against a higher after load and therefore work output is said to be five to seven times greater uh, by the left ventricle as compared to that of the right ventricle so comparison is over we were just comparing right and left ventricle which is actually not related to the loop because the loop is entirely for the left ventricle but just uh, for the sake of understanding now come back to the loop come back to the left ventricular pressure volume change okay comparison over now we are strictly talking about the left ventricular pressure volume changes and the loop and i am going to make a very important statement here or two statements what are those two statements one increase preload on the left ventricle will increase the stroke volume yes increase preload increases the stroke volume how by frank starling law frank starling law i have discussed it in various places we have seen it in the Starling's law, skeletal muscle, then in the cardiac output also, we, uh, I'm going to describe it, Frank Starling law. Uh, increase preload increases the stroke volume. How? Because see, preload means end diastolic volume. So, more the filling in the ventricle during diastole, 
मोर विल बी द स्ट्रेच ऑफ द वेंट्रिकुलर मसल फाइबर बाय द एंड ऑफ द डायस्टोल दैट मींस फाइबर लेंथ वेंट्रिकुलर फाइबर लेंथ विल बी ग्रेटर मोर लुक सपोज नॉर्मली हंड्रेड एम एल फील्स इन द वेंट्रिकल फाइबर लेंथ विल इंक्रीज ड्यूरिंग डायस्टोल and now suppose 130 ml is being filled in the ventricle fiber length will increase to a greater extent isn't it length will increase by the end of the diastole but more the filling greater will be the length of the fiber by the end of the diastole and greater the length that means with next systole stronger will be the contraction starling's law greater the initial length stronger is the contraction of course within physiological limits right and stronger the next contraction means greater will be the stroke volume blood ejected out will be greater so that's the application of frank starling's law so far as the preload is concerned increase preload increases the stroke volume so we can say within physiological limits more the amount of blood returning to the heart and more is filling into the heart more is the amount of blood pumped out by the heart okay or let me also uh, have one more modification of this heart pumps out all the extra amount of blood that is returning to it and filling in the ventricle okay i am going to describe this once again after let's say 5 10 minutes but please remember suppose normal end diastolic volume is 130 ml okay and that is causing ventricular fiber to stretch to a certain extent if the end diastolic volume becomes 150 ml then that means that 20 extra ml is being filled during diastole so with next systole normally 80 ml was ejected out we saw in the curve 130 ml filled during diastole then 80 ml ejected out during next systole if 150 ml blood is filled during diastole then that means 20 ml extra so next stroke volume will also be 20 ml extra that 20 ml extra will be ejected out so what will be the stroke volume stroke volume will not be 80 ml it will be 100 ml instead of 80 ml so uh, application of frank starling law is that heart pumps out all the extra amount of blood that fills into it therefore please remember the application of frank starling's law in this heart will pump out all the extra amount of blood that fills into the chamber that's preload and frank starling law now coming to the afterload increased afterload on the left ventricle what will be the case it will decrease the stroke volume it will decrease the stroke volume okay so increased preload increases the stroke volume that's frank starling law increased afterload decreases the stroke volume you know why because then left ventricle has to pump the blood against that higher pressure and higher load and therefore the stroke volume will decrease please remember this it's a very a golden rule that you should know in the context of the cardiac cycle and pressure volume changes so that was uh, one more aspect related to the cardiac cycle and pressure volume changes now let's also see two more effects related to the cardiac cycle related to the heart and can be demonstrated uh, in this uh, loop okay first of all this point indicates inotropic state of the left ventricle inotropic state of the myocardium always write the correct uh, spelling for inotropic inotropic is i n o the myocardial contractility so point d 
इंडिकेट्स आइनोट्रोपिक स्टेट ऑफ द मायोकार्डियम आइनोट्रोपिक स्टेट ऑफ द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल दिस विल बी द एक्सिस इट विल इंडिकेट आइनोट्रोपिक स्टेट सो पॉजिटिव आइनोट्रोपिज्म मीन्स इंक्रीज्ड कॉन्ट्रेक्टिलिटी increased myocardial contractility increased strength of contraction of the left ventricle the point will go up that's positive inotropism right and the point goes up means what the loop will come from that point see the point has gone up this is positive inotropism means what look the loop will occur like this now it will come from that point this is indicative of the positive inotropic effect now i want you to note two three points in this okay first point is height of the loop increases in positive inotropism inotropic effect is effect on the myocardial contractility strength of contraction so height of the loop increases you can see that because left ventricle is contracting more powerfully so pressure inside the left ventricle will be higher i mean that's obvious so height has increased second thing is width of the loop also increases width indicates what Width indicates stroke volume, so stroke volume also will be higher. Again, that's obvious because left ventricle is contracting stronger; it will eject out more amount of blood. Stroke volume will increase. But the third point, which I want you to notice, is that it is contracting strongly or stronger. from the same end diastolic volume from the normal end diastolic volume the left ventricle is contracting more powerfully so that means 130 ml was the end diastolic volume but from that 130 ml now the left ventricle is ejecting out 100 ml instead of 80 normal stroke volume was 80 now it is ejecting out 100 ml stroke volume what will remain behind by the end of the systole 30 ml that means end systolic volume will be less when the myocardial contractility increases end systolic volume will become less so that's the importance of end systolic volume heart is contracting more powerfully but more powerfully it contracts from the normal end diastolic volume okay that's the important point from 130 ml of end diastolic volume it is now ejecting out 100 ml in the next uh, systole instead of normal 80 ml stroke volume was 80 ml we have noticed noted that already right so that's a, a positive inotropism instead if it is negative inotropism this point will come down this point will come here it comes down means what it means the loop will be like this that's a negative inotropic effect the point has come down so uh, the loop shown in the blue is the positive inotropism and the loop shown in the red is negative inotropism this will be a positive inotropism will be uh, in the case of catecholamines cardiac glycosides digitalis they have a positive inotropic effect negative inotropism as in the conditions of heart failure so left ventricle is failing as a pump what do you see there height has decreased width has decreased so left ventricular pressure has fallen and uh, its um, width is decreasing so stroke volume is becoming less and less that's a negative inotropism now if you look at this axis which i had shown and this point which we noted for the inotropic effect just note it and i'm drawing another curve to uh, just explain it one more times 
and the curve is called as frank starling curve it is a left ventricular pv loop but it's slightly different so let's just draw it here it's called frank starling curve it is a pressure volume relationship but it's slightly different now in this case pressure is on the horizontal axis okay just one off case we will return to those curves again this is a frank starling curve left ventricular end diastolic pressure 10 mm of hg 20 mm of hg 30 mm of hg plotted against stroke volume so you know this this curve which i am about to draw it's different in the sense that here the volume is on the vertical axis and uh, pressure is on the horizontal axis in our normal loops it's other way around in those left ventricular pv loops that i was discussing okay so stroke volume uh, 50 ml 100 ml and uh, the normal frank starling curve is like this this is a normal frank starling curve remember we had drawn inotropic effect somewhat similar is the shape of this uh, frank starling curve what does it indicate it indicates that for for the stroke volume of c concentrated on this point okay this point what does that point indicate it indicates that for a stroke volume of about 80 ml c 50 100 so somewhere here 80 ml the left ventricular end diastolic pressure is about 5 to 8 mm of hg that's a normal frank starling curve and if there is negative inotropism what will happen the loop comes down the the line comes down we saw that over there same thing happens here that's why i wanted to just correlate this curve with our normal pv loops this is slightly different um but the point is that this point comes down and the loop appears like this so this is left ventricular failure negative inotropism see the point has come down this point which was here it comes down and the loop is actually like this it indicates left ventricular failure so why is that now you can note in the failing heart the stroke volume will be less i mean see you can see in the diagram it's hardly 50 ml and for a 50 ml stroke volume the left ventricular end diastolic pressure is rising you know what is happening is less blood is ejected out stroke volume is decreasing falling and uh, because ventricle is failing so more blood is left behind by the end of the systole because a stroke volume is less that means more blood stays back in the left ventricle by the end of that systole and then the diastole blood is filled in the ventricle so you know what is happening is the left ventricular end diastolic volume is increasing and the left ventricular end the diastolic pressure is also increasing so that is indicative of the failing heart left ventricular failure so just uh, the curve is flat then it says left ventricular end diastolic pressure is increasing and increasing but there is no rise in the stroke volume you know the curve is flat it's not going up like that therefore that this is called as frank starling curve they may give you such curve and ask you so how to read the curve that's the most important thing in all this discussion look at the stroke volume look at the left ventricular end diastolic pressure right so we saw inotropic effect now let us see another effect 
and that is called as well i am not going to mention it straight away i will ask you whether you have ever heard this term so first of all let's draw the normal left ventricular pv loop well yes here is a volume here is a pressure of the left ventricle mm of hg all right first we saw inotropic effect which is indicated by this point and it is like this axis for it will be like this now what is represented by this point point b it represents relaxability and diastolic function of the left ventricle relaxability and diastolic function of the left ventricle is indicated by this point point b okay so is there any name for this yes it's called as lucytropic effect if the contractility is called as a uh, inotropism and inotropic effect then relaxability and diastolic function is called as lucytropy well i should tell you that various authors use different terms for this lucytropy luci or tropy spellings are also different so let's write down what's what's most commonly accepted lucytropy some authors call it luci or tropy some authors write it as l u s y but certainly nobody writes l u c y that's l u c uh people write it l u s i okay and uh, therefore lucytropy is diastolic function and relaxability so negative lucytropy will be uh, reflected as how this point goes here this is negative lucytropy negative lucytropy this point comes here means the curve the loop will now go through this from this point look let's understand the arrow phase of filling it's like this and this this is negative lucytropy means a relaxability and diastolic function has been affected is compromised that's what is indicated why do i say that i think we have discussed it slightly in the uh, a few minutes ago that this uh, phase of filling it should be a flat line and what do you see here the line is going up that means what that means by the end of the diastole the pressure is rising in the ventricle and why is that because ventricles are unable to expand normally they are unable to expand properly to accommodate that blood right and therefore by the end of the diastole the pressure has increased so what are the conditions yes constrictive pericardia is cardiac tamponade these are the conditions when ventricle fails to expand properly and accommodate the blood so negative lucytropy means increase in the end diastolic pressure which should not happen normally and decrease in the end diastolic volume you can see here volume should be normally 130 ml and this uh, curve shown in the blue what does it tell you the volume is hardly what 100 or 110 ml that means ventricle since ventricle is unable to expand properly normally therefore the uh, normal amount of blood cannot be filled in the left ventricle so by the end of the diastole only 100 or 110 ml was filled end diastolic volume is less in the case of constrictive pericarditis or cardiac tamponade such conditions and end diastolic pressure is more so that's negative lucytropy ventricle is unable to expand diastolic function has been interfered with okay 
पॉजिटिव लुसीट्रॉपी दैट विल बी वेरी ऑब्वियस दिस पॉइंट विल कम ह्योर दैट्स अ पॉजिटिव लुसीट्रॉपी द एरो हैज स्लाइटली गॉन आप ओके इट शुड हैव बीन अ फ्लैट एरो बिकॉज एज वी सेड left ventricle can expand and accommodate the blood without allowing the pressure to rise that's okay up to 130 ml 140 ml but if more and more blood fills during diastole pressure is slightly going to increase so arrow is slightly curved it's not all that flat anyways so that will be positive leucotropy when left ventricle is able to expand more its diastolic function is even better we have done this that the catecholamines have positive leucotropic effect you will see that in the uh, cardiac output i have described it in detail the effect of a protein called as phospholamban so you can refer to that section that it has a positive leucotropic effect catecholamines have a positive leucotropic effect and therefore these are the uh, diastolic function and leucotropy catecholamines have a positive leucotropic effect and uh, yeah constrictive pericarditis and cardiac tamponade have negative leucotropic effect so therefore this was the another change in the left ventricular pv loop that you must see i positive inotropy versus negative inotropy and then positive leucotropy versus negative leucotropy so that was an additional dimension that we discussed the next is i want to discuss uh three effects on the left ventricle three effects that i want to discuss preload versus myocardial contractility so we will compare that in one loop and then we will draw another loop to indicate after load the changes in increased after load okay i am going to compare increased preload versus increased myocardial contractility i will compare in the same loop and then we will see one more loop in which there is effect of increased after load what happens to the left ventricular pv loop uh, first of all why do we compare increased preload versus increased myocardial contractility because in both these conditions the stroke volume is going to be higher and the left ventricular pressure is also going to be higher you understand that width of the loop that is stroke volume that is higher in both these cases frank starling law and myocardial contractility both have increased stroke volume but they are different we will compare that and i'll explain and height also is increased in both these conditions because left ventricle is contracting stronger in both these conditions yeah and then uh, increase after load in one more loop so let's compare now here we go again with the normal loop let's draw the normal loop first i am not going to write the units lest the figure will become complicated so uh, without writing much of the units here is the end diastolic volume just let's write that here is the end systolic volume okay first the increased preload how will the loop appear increase preload preload is reflected by the end diastolic volume isn't it let's say normal end diastolic volume is about 130 ml now this point has shifted end diastolic volume becomes uh, let's say 150 ml all right so what happens to the loop it is something like this this will be the increased preload this is how the loop appears with increased preload and we have already discussed it twice more the filling 
during diastole more will be the stroke volume in the next systole okay we have also said that heart pumps out all the extra amount of blood that is filled in the heart or in the ventricle so see normal end diastolic volume 130 ml and stroke volume normally was 80 ml this is the normal stroke volume 80 ml so that end systolic volume by the end of the systole some 50 ml is left behind correct that was a normal function now end diastolic volume is 150 ml which means what which means 20 ml extra blood was filled in the ventricle in the previous diastole so you see the stroke volume also has increased in the next systole stroke volume is now 100 ml so what does it tell you that extra 20 ml which was filled in the ventricle then in the next systole extra 20 ml is ejected out so instead of 80 ml now the stroke volume is 100 ml which means what which means end systolic volume will stay where it is okay from 150 ml of end diastolic volume 100 ml is ejected out now end systolic volume will remain 50 ml only isn't it so in the case of increased preload there is increased end diastolic volume fine and uh, increased width of the loop increased height of the loop but end systolic volume remains the same it remains normal what is the point that i am trying to make this is by increasing the length of the ventricular fiber frank starling law is applicable here in what sense it in the left ventricular end diastolic length is higher instead of 130 ml if the end diastolic volume is 150 means more blood is filled that means ventricular fiber length is greater than what it should be isn't it so by increasing the fiber length next systole becomes stronger and ejects out more amount of blood that is the principle behind increased preload let's compare this with increased myocardial contractility or positive inotropic effect okay we have already done it let's draw it once again positive inotropism or increased myocardial contractility the loop shown in the blue is the positive inotropism here positive inotropic effect right so what does that curve tell you uh, positive inotropic effect it tells you that there is increased width okay there is increased height so left ventricle is contracting stronger it is ejecting out more amount of blood stroke volume is greater so increased width and because it is contracting stronger the left ventricular pressure is also higher so height has increased but now this is to be understood the stronger contraction is starting from the normal end diastolic volume end diastolic volume was 130 ml and from that in the next systole 100 ml was ejected out okay that's something to be understood from the normal 130 ml of end diastolic volume next systole pumps out 100 ml of blood and therefore what will be then left behind by the end of the systole 30 ml that means end systolic volume will be less so please remember in the case of increased preload 
end systolic volume remains normal but in the positive inotropic effect end systolic volume becomes less because the left ventricle contracted strongly after the normal end diastolic volume end diastolic volume was normal so that means in this case fiber length was not increased any further see in the case of preload the filling was increased during diastole so fiber length was increasing okay look when i say increasing i mean over and above what happens during the normal diastole further increase in length was happening when the preload was increasing but in the case of positive inotropic effect fiber length is what will be for 130 ml of end diastolic volume fiber is not getting any uh, stretched any more any further and still the left ventricle contracts stronger in the next systole so so the comparison now you have in both these conditions the left ventricle contracts strongly and ejects out more amount of blood but when we say increase preload that stronger contraction is achieved by a higher length end diastolic length of the ventricular fiber and higher greater length of the fiber means actin myosin interaction in the next systole next contraction the actin myosin interaction becomes better cross bridge cycling becomes better and it produces a stronger contraction whereas in the case of positive inotropic effect uh, that's not the case it is independent of the fiber length that the cross bridge cycling becomes a better without any greater increase in the fiber length so stronger contractions in two different states of the myocardium now increased afterload but i am saying this again and again and again that stronger contraction producing normal end systolic volume will be the increased preload because end diastolic volume was greater and stronger contraction with a reduced end systolic volume means positive inotropism because from a normal end diastolic volume greater stroke volume was ejected out in the next systole right now coming to the increase after load how will the graph appear okay here is a normal left ventricular pv loop now increase after load uh, we know that the uh, height of the loop increases after load is indicated by the height of this loop we know that already uh, now at the other point that we have already discussed is that if there is increased after load there is a decrease in the stroke volume so width of the loop will decrease uh, stroke volume will be less and imagine if the stroke volume is less what will happen to the end systolic volume see if the less blood is ejected out that means what more blood will stay behind as end systolic volume isn't it by the end of the systole more blood will stay back because less blood was ejected out so more blood will stay back in the uh, left ventricle so increase the end systolic volume here are the two points end systolic volume increases right okay so here we show that as increased end systolic volume the point has shifted here and we also know that the height increases and width decreases so height of the loop will increase and width of the loop will decrease you can see here so this is the loop for increased after load see end systolic volume has increased because stroke volume was less so end systolic volume has increased and height which is reflective of the after load that also has increased 
if there is a greater afterload left ventricle will have to contract more powerfully and its pressure will increase so, so that's what now the only point that you must be wondering is sir why this point has shifted end diastolic volume we never discussed that so far why the end diastolic volume will increase okay the answer is obvious look end systolic volume is higher okay means more amount of blood stays in the ventricle by the end of the systole now the ventricle goes in diastole and it re it receives its normal quota of blood what will happen end diastolic volume will also be higher yes so we have shifted the end diastolic volume only thing is that don't shift the two volumes esv and edv with same scale don't shift both of them with the same scale otherwise what will happen then the loop width will remain the same no so uh, we don't want that loop uh, should be narrowed the width should be narrowed so that is the increased afterload the conditions like aortic stenosis or conditions where increased aortic pressure happens that the increased afterload the curve will appear like this so these were some of the conditions which uh, change the left ventricular pv loop they can give you any loop and say diagnose this uh, or they can give you one point and say what what that point shift means these are some of the changes that happen so we have discussed the cardiac cycle and its events then we also describe the pressure and volume changes finally in this particular section we will see the valvular heart diseases and um, the changes that happen in the left ventricular pv loops so pathophysiology you know all the exam patterns are now moving towards the clinical type questions therefore uh, even the basic sciences will have to be clubbed with the uh, clinical conditions and therefore we will have to understand these in detail it will help you understand those diseases in medicine uh, first thing that uh, there are four conditions that we will discuss basically in front of the left ventricle there are two valves the mitral valve that's situated between the left atrium and the left ventricle and then left ventricle uh, pumps the blood into the into the aorta and at the start of that there is aortic valve so we have two valves uh, mitral and aortic and therefore we have uh, four conditions mitral stenosis mitral regurgitation aortic stenosis aortic regurgitation and uh, if you have read something about these conditions stenosis and regurgitation in stenosis there is a narrowing of the opening of the valve the valve leaflets are adhered and opening is narrowed so that's uh, the basic problem in the stenosis whereas regurgitation is the condition in which uh, the valve is unable to close and prevent the backflow of blood that's the regurgitant valve condition and therefore we have uh, those four conditions let's begin with the first one mitral stenosis and what all changes occur uh, in the left ventricular pressures and volumes so first uh, let's draw the normal loop we have done it a number of times now here is a normal loop and of course i had asked a question at the start the left ventricular pv loop is shifted to left in which of the following conditions and i think we have taken the answer also mitral stenosis so we'll understand what what are those changes pathophysiological changes and why how come the curve is shifted to the left okay so we have volume and we have pressure right now first thing what is the most obvious first change in mitral stenosis let's write it down here is a stenosed mitral valve 
and therefore uh, through the stenosed mitral valve less amount of blood can go from the left atrium to left ventricle that is the most obvious first uh, effect of mitral stenosis that means there would be a decreased left ventricular filling right that's the first obvious change now if there's a decreased left ventricular filling that means there is a decrease in the end diastolic volume yes that is obvious during diastole the filling would be less reduced end diastolic volume uh, remember what we have said about the end diastolic volume end diastolic volume indicates the preload on the left ventricle so there is a decrease in the preload right let's show it here remember we have said this is the point of end diastolic volume and it decreases in mitral stenosis so let's shift it here end diastolic volume has decreased and remember the frank starling law frank starling law says more the filling more is the stroke volume less the filling less will be the stroke volume proportionately i mean if 20 ml extra blood fills into the ventricle then that 20 ml extra blood also will be ejected out along with the normal stroke volume yeah and similarly if the filling is less then the stroke volume also becomes proportionately less because that all depends on the ventricular fiber length by the end of the diastole so less the filling less will be the stroke volume so that end systolic volume remains normal we've done that uh, when we discussed the preload so less the filling less will be the stroke volume and therefore the end systolic volume will remain the same will remain normal okay for instance let's take the example normally the end diastolic volume is 130 ml and from that 80 ml is ejected out so that 50 ml stays back as the end systolic volume by the end of the systole now instead if the end diastolic volume is only 100 ml because of mitral stenosis less filling has occurred so from this 100 ml only 50 ml will be ejected out instead of 80 ml which is a normal stroke volume only 50 ml will be ejected out so from 100 if the 50 is pumped out what remains 50 ml remains as an end systolic volume so this is what we have said already a number of times that the fallout of the frank starling law is end systolic volume remains the same remains normal right so so far so good i have stopped the curve at this point where the end systolic volume is 50 ml normal yes but then what happens is decreased preload right and therefore there is decreased stroke volume we have said that just now frank starling law correct now see the compensatory changes it's a fascinating curve see the compensatory changes look stroke volume is decreasing and uh, where is this stroke volume ejected the stroke volume is being ejected into the aorta so it means that if the stroke volume is becoming less that means less blood is being ejected into the aorta and that means over a period of time what will happen aorta pressure will begin to decrease 
so uh, the the compensatory change would be that there would be a decrease in aortic pressure i hope you understood this i'll just quickly tell you once again if the stroke volume is less and less less and less blood is being pumped into the aorta by the left ventricle so that means less blood filling into the aorta over a period of time aorta pressure will begin to fall it, it decreases aortic pressure decreases now tell me what what is reflected by the aortic pressure come on we have done this a number of times aortic pressure indicates after load on the left ventricle so that means over a period of time there would be a decreased after load see this was the initial change as a result of the mitral stenosis but now this is the secondary change that is happening so now the after load on the left ventricle is decreasing we have done this about the after load increase after load decreases the stroke volume decrease after load will increase the stroke volume yes so there will be an increased stroke volume as a secondary change the stroke volume which had decreased by frank starling law now will begin to increase again because of an increased after load so if the stroke volume increases look we had stopped the curve here but now with the ejection more, uh, stroke volume is going to be higher increase because of a reduced after load you can see the height of the curve has decreased after load is going to be less and because stroke volume begins to increase you know this if the stroke volume is higher now end systolic volume will fall obviously if more blood is ejected out during systole then by the end of the systole less blood will remain so end systolic volume will now become less because stroke volume is increasing so i am shifting the end systolic volume to a lesser side on this side as stroke volume increases and that so decrease in the end systolic volume that is the mitral stenosis curve so let me just draw it properly here is the mitral stenosis curve but remember there is some narrowing of the curve let me explain this we have understood a few things from this first height of the loop has decreased okay i am using the terms loop and curve interchangeably don't get confused there so height of the loop has decreased after load has decreased clear uh what about the stroke volume eventually what happens to the stroke volume will it increase or decrease because we, we have said by frank starling law initially the stroke volume decreased and then it again increases so what happens net net is a slight decrease in the stroke volume okay so stroke volume will be uh, if it is 80 ml normally it would be 70 75 ml final uh, end result will be a decrease in stroke volume so there will be a slight decrease in the width width will slightly decrease what i am trying to say here is i am shifting the end diastolic volume and end systolic volume but not by the same proportion end diastolic volume decrease is more than the decrease in end systolic volume here is the end systolic volume i'll just uh, write it once again decrease in the end diastolic volume is more than the decrease in end systolic volume and therefore the net result is a decrease in stroke volume can you understand this if i was shifting both these points end diastolic volume and end systolic volume with the same magnitude then the simply the curve will shift and width will not change but i am shifting this point much more and this point not so much that means width will slightly narrow stroke volume will slightly decrease so that is the mitral stenosis and the changes that happen 
primarily, secondarily and all that. So please remember, they can ask you this question. Mitral stenosis is a condition of increased preload, increase after load, decrease preload, decrease after load, increase preload, decrease after load, or decrease preload, increase after load. Now you can tell me the answer. Mitral stenosis is a condition of decreased preload and decreased after load. So, uh, it will be easier for you to understand this condition in medicine. Let's now move on to the second uh, condition that's mitral regurgitation. Another fascinating condition and see the changes that happen in mitral regurgitation. So, first of all, let's draw the normal loop. Yes, here we go. That's a normal left ventricular pressure volume loop. Okay. Now, first thing, okay, like, let's write down volume and pressure. Uh, first of all, what is the first and the most obvious primary change in mitral regurgitation? Think about this. The most obvious primary effect of mitral regurgitation let me draw it here. See, left ventricle not only pumps the blood into the aorta, but an additional amount of blood goes back through the regurgitant mitral valve back into the left atrium. Yeah, this is a mitral valve which is regurgitant. So, left ventricle is ejecting out the blood into the aorta and an additional amount of blood is going back through the regurgitant mitral valve back into the left atrium. That means left ventricle is ejecting out extra amount of blood during systole. So, what do you think will happen to the end systolic volume? It will be less because more blood volume was pumped out. Less volume will stay behind by the end of the systole, end systolic volume decreases. Here is the end systolic volume, it decreases. That's the first most obvious effect, decrease in the end systolic volume. Second, what is the most obvious second effect because of the regurgitant blood? See, this blood has gone back into the left atrium, okay. So, left atrium has received blood, the regurgitant blood from the left ventricle that it has gone into the left atrium and left atrium receives its normal quota of blood from the lungs. You know the oxygenated blood coming from the pulmonary circulation that too will drain here into the left atrium. It has to receive that blood and all that blood will finally go where? It will go down into the left ventricle again. It means the left ventricle will receive extra amount of blood because of this kind of regurgitation. And that means end diastolic volume will be increased higher. Yes. So end diastolic volume will increase increase in the end diastolic volume let's write down this right uh, now what do you think will happen in isovolumic contraction isovolumic contraction uh, let me first uh, say a generalized statement i have said this already in the cardiac cycle just let me reiterate once again in the regurgitant valve conditions there is no true isovolumic contraction. There is no true isovolumic relaxation. I mean, we call it isovolumic in the normal sense. But then the ventricle will not remain isovolumic. Why? Because the valve is leaking. So, blood will flow during that isovolumic contraction or relaxation. So, let's understand this. Isovolumic contraction this line, what will happen to this line, isovolumic contraction? Just think it through. 
imagine start of the systole at the onset of ventricular systole what is the first thing that happens ventricular pressure becomes more than the atrial pressure and so av valve closes and first that sound is produced yeah that was at the onset of systole and as av valve closes but uh, semilunar valves are yet to open means aortic and pulmonary valves are yet to open so there is isovolumic contraction mitral valve closes but aortic valve is yet to open that was the condition of isovolumic contraction right but what has happened just before that ventricular pressure becomes more than the atrial pressure and then the isovolumic contraction starts ventricular pressure more than the atrial pressure and mitral valve is regurgitant what will happen then the blood will go from left ventricle to left atrium during isovolumic contraction so during isovolumic contraction in mitral regurgitation blood will go out of the left ventricle it will not remain isovolumic so see here isovolumic is indicated by the straight line yeah on the uh, this is volume so straight line means volume remaining the same now we are saying that the blood goes out of the left ventricle during isovolumic contraction in mitral regurgitation that means ventricular volume will decrease so how will you show this line then decrease volume instead of a straight line where how will you show it like that towards a decreasing volume yes so the line will be like this on on this side there are lesser volumes right straight line was isovolumic this is a decreasing volume which is shown by this line so during that phase when left ventricular volume will decrease blood will go back into the left atrium and that's because ventricular pressure is more than the atrial pressure uh, that is what happened at the start of ventricular systole now next what do you think will happen in isovolumic relaxation this line is isovolumic relaxation what do you think will happen in that phase so let's just recount the isovolumic relaxation isovolumic relaxation was like this at the end of the ventricular systole now the diastole has started so the aortic valve closes semilunar valve that's the aortic valve in this case but mitral valve is yet to open mitral valve is yet to open ventricular pressure is falling but it has not become less than the atrial pressure right that was isovolumic relaxation so av valve could not open yet although semilunar valve has got closed so mitral valve is yet to open aortic valve has got closed and although ventricular pressure is decreasing it is still more than the atrial pressure isn't it that is why the mitral valve the av valve could not open yet remember we have said this i am just repeating it once again only when the ventricular pressure goes below the atrial pressure then the av valve will open isn't it till that time the av valve remains closed normally in a normal cardiac cycle so ventricular pressure is still more left ventricular pressure is still greater than the left atrial pressure during isovolumic relaxation okay it is falling the pressure is falling but it's still more than the left atrial pressure and therefore what do you think what will happen the blood will still go from the left ventricle to the left atrium during isovolumic relaxation mark my words again please note this point that ventricle will be relaxing and yet sending the blood out sending the blood back into the left atrium yes why am i reiterating this again and again because when the ventricles relax 
वी एक्सपेक्ट वेंट्रिकल टू रिसीव द ब्लड इज इन टेट बट हियर इन द कंडीशन ऑफ मैटल रिगजिटेशन वेंट्रिकल विल बी रिलैक्सिंग एंड येट सेंडिंग द ब्लड आउट या वाई बिकॉज वेंट्रिकुलर प्रेशर इज स्टिल मोर देन द एट्रल प्रेशर एंड माइट्रल वाल इज रिगजिटंट सो ब्लड नोज ओनली वन थिंग टू फ्लो फ्रॉम हाई टू लो प्रेशर एंड देर फोर सिंस नाउ दिस इज द फेज आइसोवॉलमिक रिलैक्सेशन एंड वी आर सेंग इन माइट्रल रिगजिटेशन ब्लड गोज आउट ऑफ द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल ड्यूरिंग आइसोवॉलमिक रिलैक्सेशन दैट मीन्स वेंट्रिकुलर ब्लड वॉल्यूम विल डिक्रीज so if straight line indicates same volume iso volumic same volume then decrease volume how will you show this line it will have to be shown like this decreased volume so volume is decreasing you have to show this line going towards a lesser volume that is what happens in isovolumic relaxation so we are calling it isovolumic relaxation but ventricle does not remain isovolumic okay volume is decreasing uh, now finally two things what happens to the height of the loop what happens to the height of the loop height decreases uh, that means there is a decrease in the after load there is a decrease in the after load so please note this point and then i'll explain further there is increase in the end diastolic volume we have seen that so there is an increase preload right end diastolic volume is higher that means increase preload but there is a decrease in the after load so please make a note mitral regurgitation is a condition of increased preload but decreased after load now let me explain why is that decreased after load look normally what is the after load on the left ventricle it is the aorta pressure obviously left ventricle has to eject out all its blood at once in the aorta and aorta being the high pressure vessel so it offers that resistance which is called as after load now in this condition of mitral regurgitation it becomes easier for the left ventricle to pump the blood i mean it does not have to pump all the blood at once into the aorta some blood can be sent into the aorta and some blood can uh, go back through the regurgitant mitral valve so the load on the left ventricle to to pump the blood in a short duration and into a narrow tube that load will be now lessened because of the regurgitant mitral valve it has got a uh, one more let off and therefore the after load the load against which left ventricle is contracting that will be now less so uh, decreased after load and increased preload that's the condition of mitral regurgitation so height decreases i told you why height indicates after load finally what will happen to the width of the loop what happens to the width of the loop width increases width of the loop increases why is that it can be because of two or three reasons actually width means stroke volume first of all so stroke volume is going to be higher and it's because of three reasons i mean one of the three reasons or all of those what are those reasons one there is increased filling increase in diastolic volume frank starling law more the filling more will be the stroke volume so width has increased stroke volume increased second reason after load is less remember we have said already increase after load decreases the stroke volume decrease after load will increase the stroke volume we have said that once again yes so that will also be the reason why stroke volume is higher and the third reason is that it's a regurgitant mitral valve so as i mentioned just now that the blood will be pumped out into the aorta 
and an additional amount of blood goes through the regurgitant mitral valve and therefore overall during systole more blood is sent out of the ventricle and in that sense also we can say stroke volume will be higher. So that was the mitral regurgitation another very fascinating curve and the changes primary changes secondary change and all that compensatory changes but just remember I just repeat once again mitral stenosis the loop had shifted to the left and it's a condition of decrease preload decrease afterload mitral regurgitation is a condition of increased preload decreased afterload let's go on to the aortic conditions aortic stenosis aortic stenosis you can remember that it's basically a condition of increased after load so if you recall what we have drawn for the increased after load that will be the loop for aortic stenosis look aortic valve is stenosed and then uh, the left ventricle will have to apply more force more pressure to pump the blood through the stenosed aortic valve let's just draw it here here is the left ventricle here is the aorta and aortic valve is stenosed so you know already the chamber that is behind the stenosed valve always uh, becomes hypertrophied it has to apply more force in this case we are talking about the left ventricle and uh, therefore uh, it's an increased after load basically because left ventricle has to pump the blood through that stenosed aortic valve so there is an extra load on it and after load increases so we have said this already we saw the curve increased after load will result in what about the stroke volume come on there is a decrease in the stroke volume and if there is a decrease in the stroke volume what will happen to the end systolic volume it will be higher because less blood is being pumped out during systole more blood will stay in the ventricle by the end of the systole so increase in the end systolic volume we have done this already when I uh, discussed the preload and afterload so increase in the end systolic volume here is a point it shifts it increases okay and height increases and uh, width narrows so narrowed width decreased stroke volume width has decreased and height has increased because left ventricular pressure oh yes let me just make a point a clarification Whenever I show this um, increased height, very often the students ask this doubt that sir, you have mentioned that uh, height indicates after load on the left ventricle and after load is aorta pressure. You are thinking the same along the same lines. Let me clarify this point. After load. Uh, is indicative of the aorta pressure now in the aortic stenosis less blood is going through the stenosed aortic valve that means aorta is filling with less blood that means aorta pressure should fall and if the aorta pressure falls after load should be less and height should be less is that what you were thinking no that's not how you should think in this situation so first thing is in this particular condition we are not talking about the aortic pressure when i say height of the loop i am not referring to the aortic pressure i am talking about the left ventricular pressure let that be very clear that in this loop height is left ventricular pressure rather than the aorta pressure 
and obviously left ventricular pressure will be higher because left ventricle has to pump the blood through the stenosis the aortic valve okay so please make that clarification in your mind in this loop height means left ventricular pressure not the aorta pressure so that's one and second is narrowing of the uh, width we have said that height increased and we discussed this also end diastolic volume also has shifted to the right means it has increased why is that why is end, uh, end diastolic volume increased i uh, have described it already look end systolic volume has increased primarily so by the end of the systole more blood volume is there in the left ventricle and then as the ventricle goes in diastole it receives its normal quota of blood from the left atrium what will happen end diastolic volume also will be higher than normal obvious only thing is again don't shift both these points with the same amplitude same magnitude okay increase in the end systolic volume will be more let's write it down increase in the end systolic volume will be greater than increase in the end diastolic volume and therefore width will narrow you can understand this this point shifted much more than the end diastolic volume and therefore finally the loop the width will be narrowed right so that's uh, the entire explanation to the aortic stenosis and then we have one more that's aortic regurgitation ar the aortic regurgitation so let's see the changes in aortic regurgitation let's first draw the normal loop here is a normal left ventricular pv loop tap first what is the first primary and the most obvious change in aortic regurgitation let's draw it here is the left ventricle and uh, here is the aorta now in aortic regurgitation what happens is left ventricle is not only receiving the blood from the left atrium but also an additional amount of blood that is regurgitating from the aorta back into the left ventricle aortic valve is regurgitant okay so an extra blood is regurgitating back into the left ventricle from the aorta back into the left ventricle that means uh, the left ventricle receives extra amount of blood during diastole which means what which means there is increase in the end diastolic volume isn't it very obvious that's the first change so let's show it here increase in the end diastolic volume yes it will increase next next point is what do you expect will happen in isovolumic contraction i had described it in the cardiac cycle you may refer to that section once again events in the cardiac cycle isovolumic contraction let's draw a diagram and understand the isovolumic contraction of the left ventricle look at the onset of ventricular systole ventricular pressure becomes more than the atrial pressure so av valve closes so in this case mitral valve it closes but semilunar valves are yet to open we have said this means aortic and pulmonary valves are yet to open in this case aortic valve because we are talking about the left ventricle so aortic valve is yet to open it has not yet opened why it has not yet opened because the left ventricular pressure although it is rising it's a systole so left ventricular pressure is increasing but it has not become more than the aorta pressure so the aortic valve could not open yet and mitral valve has already closed 
and therefore it's an isovolumic contraction both valves are closed and ventricle is contracting like a closed chamber so note it that uh, left ventricular pressure has not become more than the aorta pressure so aortic valve could not open that means what that means aorta pressure is still more than the left ventricular pressure in the isovolumic contraction and aortic valve regurgitant aortic valve regurgitant and aorta pressure more than the left ventricular pressure what do you think will happen blood will go from aorta back into the left ventricle during isovolumic contraction because blood knows only one thing to go from high to low pressure valve is supposed to stop it but it will not happen it's regurgitant so aorta pressure more than the left ventricular pressure and aortic valve regurgitant so what will happen blood will go from aorta back into the left ventricle during isovolumic contraction so i want you to note this point again that in aortic regurgitation in isovolumic contraction although left ventricle is contracting and yet it is receiving the blood normally when the ventricle contracts as in systole you expect the blood to go out eject out but in this condition aortic regurgitation left ventricle will be contracting and yet receiving the blood okay because the aortic valve is regurgitant now if it is receiving the blood during isovolumic contraction as we saw just now that means it will not remain isovolumic isovolumic is with the straight line yeah on the on this axis there is volume and the straight line means isovolumic and now we are saying that during this phase ventricle receives the blood from the aorta that means left ventricular blood volume will increase so now tell me how will you show this straight i mean this line how will you show it come on volume is increasing yes the line should go to that side this is a lower volume that is a higher volume so and li line should go like this increased volume all right that's isovolumic contraction now then next what do you think will happen in isovolumic relaxation what will happen isovolumic relaxation come on speak it out isovolumic relaxation what happens left ventricular pressure begins to fall and soon it becomes less than the aorta pressure so aortic valve will close i'm talking about the normal cardiac cycle aortic valve closes but mitral valve is yet to open why it is yet to open because left ventricular pressure is although it is falling but it does not become less than the left atrial pressure so that valve is also closed mitral valve but that's not our point our point is about the aortic valve we've said that left ventricle left ventricular pressure begins to fall it's diastole and it becomes less than the aorta pressure and therefore aortic valve closes and the other valve is also closed so it is isovolumic relaxation so left ventricular pressure goes below the aorta pressure and aortic valve regurgitant what do you expect to happen again blood will go from aorta back into the left ventricle in the condition of aortic regurgitation in this phase the isovolumic relaxation okay so left ventricular blood volume will increase left ventricle will receive the blood during isovolumic relaxation in this condition ar so how will you show this line straight line is isovolumic now we are saying that in this phase left ventricle will receive the blood and its volume will increase so how will you show it this is straight line means isovolumic how will you show this line yes it will go like that this will be the increased volume isovolumic relaxation see if you have still not understood 
this is the starting point of the phase isovolumic relaxation and this is the end point of the phase it started at this point and it ended at this point means volume has increased now straight line was isovolumic and going this and pressure is falling on this axis there is pressure okay so the arrow going down means pressure is falling that's fine but what about the volume volume will not remain the same as in a straight arrow volume increase is shown like this this is the starting volume yeah this one and this is the end point of that phase so isn't it volume has increased during that phase and finally what will happen to the uh, height of the loop height of the loop will increase well let me explain this i know what you will say again that uh, sir this is the condition of aortic regurgitation that means blood does not stay in the aorta blood regurgitates back into the left ventricle so if the blood does not stay in the aorta aorta pressure will decrease over a period of time and if the aorta pressure decreases after load will also decrease height should decrease that is what you were thinking i know that well again i will say that again in this loop we are not talking about the after load and we are not talking about the aorta pressure okay i am not talking about after load when we are looking at the height of the loop in aortic regurgitation we are talking about the left ventricular pressure rather than the aorta pressure or after load and therefore left ventricular pressure will increase you know there is increased filling of the left ventricle so left ventricle will contract stronger frank sarling law and therefore height of the loop also can increase of course as i told you we could have shown decreased height because aorta does not contain any blood it goes back into left ventricle therefore aorta pressure is less after load is less and of course we can also see that there may be i mean over a period of time because there will, there is excessive filling of the left ventricle it might go into a state of failure and if it goes into a state of failure again uh, the height would have decreased so but we cannot show increase and decrease height in the same loop isn't it we have to take one of those and therefore i have taken this this is a left ventricular pressure the height indicative of left ventricular pressure so you may make a differentiation that in some graphs we have taken i mean most of the graphs most of the graphs we have taken height as the after load aorta pressure only in the last two uh, aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation we have taken height as indicative of the left ventricular pressure so let's uh, uh, keep that in mind and therefore you can say aortic regurgitation is again a condition of increased preload and after load is going to decrease which we have not shown here after load will be less because yes uh, this time see in aortic stenosis it it had an increased after load but here uh blood does not stay in the aorta aorta pressure falls so after load will be less this will is a condition of increased preload and decrease after load these were various conditions related to, uh, or rather they, these are the valvular heart diseases apart from that we have also described some of the other conditions like uh, constrictive pericarditis cardiac tamponade what will happen to the to these curves so uh for instance we have said that it will appear like this i mean phase of filling the line should have been straight only volume increases but the pressure should remain the same it's a straight line if it is shown like this that means as the left ventricle is filling its pressure is rising so this is constrictive pericarditis cardiac tamponade in this there is increase in the end diastolic pressure see pressure has increased pressure is on this axis so increased end diastolic pressure 
normally it's here and end diastolic volume it should be 130 ml normally we have seen that in a normal loop but in this loop it's hardly 110 this is the end diastolic volume so this is what happens in the uh, cardiac tamponade or constrictive pericarditis increase in the end diastolic pressure and but decrease in the end diastolic volume what does it indicate it indicates that there is interference with the expansion of the ventricle in these conditions so left ventric ventricle is unable to expand properly and accommodate the blood volume and because it is unable to expand properly as the blood fills in the ventricle its pressure rises which should not have happened actually normally in a normal case but it does happen here so that's uh, another clinical clinically relevant uh, loop uh, these are the various clinical applications of the left ventricular pv loops and uh, they can give you any one and they can ask you for instance they can just give you this line not the entire loop and they can ask you explain this what is happening and therefore what this condition is so if you know in detail then it's very easy to answer such questions that was the cardiac cycle and the pv loops